Hi guys, I'm Madison Mary and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a new reading vlog for you guys. So today's, this week's, however long this goes for, this reading vlog is dedicated to the wonderful Jade from The Jaded Reader. And I decided to start with Jade because she's one of my really good friends and she has some books that I've been wanting to try out that she absolutely adores and you know we tend to have quite similar reading tastes. So I've chosen three books for this vlog, those three books are going to be Scythe by Neil Shusterman, Strange to Dreamer by Lani Taylor, and The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Arda. So I vaguely know what these three books are about, but I'm going to save what they're about until I actually start reading them, just because I don't want to ramble and then repeat myself again later. I'm going to start with Strange to Dreamer. It's currently really crappy weather outside. It's Sunday, May 3rd, and so... I'm gonna start with this. This is also the biggest one out of the three of them, so I think this one's gonna take me the longest, but I'm really excited. I've heard only amazing things about this book, and so I'm really excited to see what all the hype is about. So without further ado, let's start this reading vlog. Hey, so it's me. Um, it's 1.45 a.m., so technically it's now Wednesday. Um, I've been in like a very short reading slump recently, just like a couple days. I picked up Stranger Dream, I read 15 pages on Sunday night, and um, and I was like, I really don't feel like reading any more of it than yesterday. Not in the mood at all to read. And then tonight I read, I'm currently on page 105. So I'm on part two of Strange Dreamer. I'm actually really enjoying it now. It did take me a hot second to really get into it because this is a very lyrical book. And so it does require you to, you know, really pay attention to what you're reading and to fully immerse yourself in it. I actually decided... I'm annotating in a similar way to my friend Soleil from Little Reader's Corner, the way that she annotates, which is like just using one mild liner and then just pretty much highlighting very specific goals. Well, she, she actually highlights a lot more generously than I have in this book so far. And basically just highlighting things that I really enjoy or that are really cool. Oh my god, why is my skin so shiny? I don't even have anything on it. Basically this is about Laszlo Strange and he was an orphan who had known about this city and then that city disappeared. You know, it fell out of existence and he only then knew about it as the city of weep because even its name was kind of just like erased and he has been obsessed with it and researching it for like all of his life and he is a librarian which are not very well revered people because they are just seen as kind of servants for the scholars and he finally gets an opportunity to go to the city of Weep and he takes it. And that's basically what this book is going to be about. So we follow him and then we also follow Sarai, which I think initially going into this, if you really know nothing about it, you would not know anything about her. There's a lot of fan art for Strange Dream out there. So I feel like you, if you are someone who's very aware of fan art, you would definitely know about Sarai. She is blue, brownish, brownish hair. And, you know, she's just, she's a, she's a fan art character that is very recognizable. So going into this, I knew she was going to be a character. Um, it's really cool. So we're going from part one, which was Laszlo, and now part two is Sarai. And it's really awesome because you quickly learn, you know, what she is and the other four that she's currently with. And it's really cool. So this has definitely got me a lot more intrigued than the initial, like, Laszlo's plot line, just because I love the high fantasy aspect of Sarai and her being in the city of Weep and um, just learning about, you know, the different powers of the five of them and the gods and what happened. You're kind of like slowly kind of learning what happened to Weep. I have a couple of theories so far. My first theory was that they were the children, like kind of descendants of the gods. And then my second theory is because they all have names that they've been dubbed with. Like, you know, Sparrow is known as the Orchid Witch. My guess, only because like we know what the second book is called, my guess is that Sarai is the muse of nightmares. Because like, on the third page, you find out that the reason why Laszlo Strange, like he's called Strange the Dreamer because he's a dreamer and his last name is Strange. And I was like, oh my God. That's so cute. Like, that makes so much sense. Like, Strange the Dreamer. Strange the Dream. I was like, oh, bro, they're so smart. I was just getting so frustrated when I was reading Laszlo's section because of Theon. Theon, I don't, however you say his name. Oh my god. I literally wanted to throw that man into a burning well. 
Does that make literal sense of burning well? No, but that is what I wanted to throw him into consistently. It was awful. Like I was reading Laszlo and I was just like, my heart was dropping for him. I was like, oh my God, you're just, you're trying to do something right. And this dude is being a total dick. But uh, yeah, that's it for this little short update. I know that it was more rambling than me actually giving you my updates on my feelings of this book, but I am really enjoying it so far. And it's definitely very beautifully written, which is what I was expecting. And I'm actually surprised by how much I'm really enjoying Sarai's storyline so i'm excited to keep on going for it so i'll let you guys know i'll update you guys probably sometime tomorrow because i think i might actually jump into bed now to finish the rest of however much i end up reading tonight and yeah that's it thank you guys bye so i just got to page uh 132 and i wanted to quickly say that because hang on i went to this page and i found the gift note that i'd gotten and it's so funny because i totally forgot that jade got this for me <laughs> And so it's so funny that I'm literally reading the book that's one of Jade's favorites for her favorite video that she got me. Okay, I'm gonna put this in as my bookmark, close it, and actually get into bed because if I keep sitting here, I'm just gonna keep reading until the end of time and I'm gonna get back on a better sleep schedule, so. Yes, bye. Hey, so it is 1.32 a.m. now on like Thursday, technically. Um, so I just want you guys to know, so right now I'm on page 180, so I just got to part three of the book, which is really cool. I'm going to keep reading. I'm aiming for at least page 200 tonight, and then we'll see what happens. I'm definitely reading this at a much slower pace than I had initially expected, and I do think that there's definitely some part of me that is still a little bit in a reading slump, but I also think that a part of it is just this book is very... It is dense in a sense, but it's also because it's very lyrical and beautifully written that you kind of take your time just appreciating it and appreciating how it's been written and just enjoying the book. There has been one revelation so far to do with Sarai and her sire, and that shocked the crap out of me. I was like, what? It is who? Oh my God. So that happened. I have a few theories. There are some questions I have. There were six gods. There were only five god spawns. So I'm like, hmm, where's the sixth one? And then there is the fact of the white bird, which has just reappeared. And I'm like, hmm, the white bird. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm really enjoying it. Um. Oh, well, there was a quote I saw earlier that was really cool that I highlighted. It's a quote from Sarai and it says, Fear was her medium and nightmares her art. And I was like, oh, oh, that's delicious. Oh, that's so good. Hi, so it's um, 6.35 p.m. right now. I just finished the Strange the... Oh, okay, I didn't just finish it. I finished it a little bit ago. But I finished Strange the Dreamer and I'm so proud because I have been part of the bookish community for a while now and I've been following, you know, fan arts and things like that and I don't know, there, there were certain things that I was able to pick up on as I read the book and be like, oh, I think that this means this and then the book ended and I was like, okay, I was right. And then there were other things where I was like, oh, I think this is actually going to be this and I was right but then there were other things that I was like oh what <laughs> and I was like no are you serious so yes I was correct this book is very depressing but it's also very beautiful like it's just it's sad in the notion of what it's about and it's a it's a tragedy in a sense because there are so many mixed feelings with the way that this story goes about and how these characters are all intertwined and their emotions and their feelings and it's just so palpable and yeah so i really enjoyed this i don't think that this is a full five stars for me but i definitely think that it still teeters on being a full 4.5 stars because of the way that it's just written and how beautiful it is and how interesting and intricate this world is and I loved learning about it and the magic system and just 
the lore and history and learning of the character. Like, it was really well crafted. I have to say, I understand now why people say that this is one of the most lyrical and beautifully written books they've ever read because I completely agree with that standpoint. I honestly believe that this book is way more of an adult read than a YA read. I think that it's adult because of just the sophistication of this novel and the, the depth that it is written in. It just, it holds this air that reminds me of other adult novels I've read and I honestly cannot compare this to any other YA novel I've read. But otherwise, next book ugh, that I'm starting is going to be to The Raven Boys of Twig Sadid. Um, this is going to be interesting to read. I don't think I'll like this. I'm lucky I got this copy for free. Um, Amanda from the Naughty Librarian had a spare copy and so she was like, hey, you want this? I was like, yes, perfect, now I can read it. Fun times, goodbye. Hey, so it is currently Monday, Tuesday, so, <laughs> so it's currently Sunday at 11, 16 p.m. Just set it up to you guys that I'm currently reading The Raven Boys. I am on chapter 17, I'm 168 pages in, so I'm getting close to halfway. The halfway mark is 204 pages, because this is a 400 page book. Also, these Scholastic paperbacks are like such a pain in the ass to read, because they're so stiff, so you literally have to crack the crap out of the spine, which is something I personally hate, but I didn't buy this book, so it's fine. It's interesting so far, I definitely was expecting a faster paced novel, and it's also a bit weird because I've seen this fandom around for so long. I've unknowingly spoiled myself for something um, because I already know clearly that um, Ronan and Adam are gay AF for one another. So it's kind of weird starting the book out and Adam actually being interested in Blue and Blue being interested in Adam. It's, I'm like, what? And then there's a fact of um, knowing that Noah's, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna say the last name just in case other people don't know, but knowing what Noah's last name is, because like I just knew that already. And so I've seen the last name come up in other contexts and I'm just like, wait, what? And I'm like, and then he said something earlier and I'm like, wait a second. So like, is he, is that, is he like, you know? I just pretty much got to the part where Gainsey went for the reading and went to psychics and so, I'm hoping that now is when we're gonna start seeing Blue actually interact with the Raven Boys because there hasn't really been much of a crossover yet and I'm really intrigued to see how it's going to work. So if you didn't know what the Raven Boys is about, I still don't fully know, but it's basically about this group of four boys, which is Noah, Ronan, Adam, and Gainsey. And Gainsey's kind of the head of this group of four boys, and they all go to this very prestigious academy. And Gainsey has for years been looking for this Welsh prince, and like the history, and the myth, and the lore, and the magic behind it all. And he's very much into like ley lines, and energy levels, and spirits, and ghosts. And at the very beginning of this book, you have Blue Sergeant who comes from a family of psychics and she's the only one who doesn't actually have a psychic power. Instead her power is that she enhances the power of other people and things around her. So she's kind of, she's kind of like an amplifier in a sense. And what happens is on the night of St. Mark's Eve, which is the night that all the dead come that are prophesied to die within the next 12 months, Gainsey appears and Blue is able to see him. And so it's basically a foreshadowing of his death and this is the first time she's been able to see a ghost, which means that she is either destined to kill him or that he is her true soulmate. And so it's basically about Blue dealing with that and the Raven Boys trying to track down this Welsh prince and the ley lines and kind of how they all interconnect, basically. I am enjoying it so far. It's really nice writing, um, especially for a book that came out in 2012. I'm really glad that it's not like too cringy or anything because it definitely would have had the potentials for that. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna go now, continue reading, and we'll see when I update you guys next. Okay, bye. Hey, so it's 3.39 p <laughs> p.m. a.m. Um, I'm just about to get to bed. I'm super tired. I spent ages editing my... Okay, if I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I decided to start rewatching Criminal Minds today. 
So it really, you know, messed everything up. <laughs> so I ended up rewatching Criminal Minds for ages, and then after dinner, I still kept watching it. And then I was like, well, I should probably start editing my video that's supposed to go up tomorrow. So I did that, and by that point, when I was done editing that, it was 12 a.m. And I was like, well, I'm gonna try and see if I can finish it. And then I finished it. And so this is me letting you guys know that I finished The Raven Boys. I finished The Raven Cycles book one. And I really enjoyed it. I just spent some time talking to Jade about it because obviously, you know, this is this is my Jade vlog. And just letting her know like my thoughts and how much I really enjoyed it and how surprised I was by enjoying it because even though I don't have the same shock factor by some of the things that did occur in this, I still really ended up enjoying it. I think that it was just actually a super fun read and it ended up being a lot different than I had perceived it in my mind. I guess because it's something that I've seen around so much that I didn't really know what to expect from it and I kind of had discounted it to an extent. And so it was really cool to read it and kind of understand why people love this series so much. I don't think it's a five stars for me. I definitely think that like the next book would probably or maybe the one after that. Just because this book, I found the beginning was a bit slow and it took me a little while to really get into it. So yeah, really positive experience. I need to get my own copies because like I said, this is the really shitty Scholastic edition. And Scholastic US paperbacks really suck. So like, yikes. But yeah, now I only have one book left to read for my jade a <laughs> And that is Scythe by Neil Shisterman, which I'll be signing tomorrow. Bye. Happy Wednesday. It is, oh, it's 11.59, so it's only Wednesday for another minute, then it's gonna be Thursday. I um, didn't update you guys at all yesterday on Tuesday because I didn't read. Today I'm on season two, episode like four. <laughs> so <laughs> I did that, um, read an, watched an entire season of Criminal Minds. Mm. Anyway, I managed to pause Criminal Minds and actually read something today because once again, I spent a lot of the day watching Criminal Minds. I have realized that it was a bad decision on my behalf when it's already taking me forever to get this reading vlog done because I've been doing it for over a week now, which is quite awful. I did begin Scythe. I am currently 50 pages in. So far I'm liking it. I really wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy Neil Shusterman's writing style because I've never read anything by him before and this series was something that always seemed slightly intimidating to me. But I definitely really am enjoying it so far and starting to learn about this world and the way that it works. I will mention that even though like this is a world where people don't die unless scythes glean them, like if someone somehow gets into a situation where they would have died in our normal world, that they can just be brought to a revival center. And so there is an aspect of this book that mentions someone. It's called splatting and it's like a kind of a like a parlor thing that like some kids like get into and like do to try and see like from heights and things like that like it's basically jumping like suicide jumping and then they just get brought to a revival center and they wake up and are fully revived within a couple days so that was a bit shocking um it wasn't too triggering but it was a bit just not like not something i had expected but at the same time i kind of did expect this sort of a topic to come up in the book. So far we've learned that different scythes work different ways. Um, we've heard about the Thunderhead, which I know is the name of one of the books. And the Thunderhead is basically the gigantic like memory of everything. And a really interesting part of this is the fact that they've already talked about how because everything has kind of been achieved that everyone's kind of useless, <laughs> which sounds really sad and bad, but it's true. Like if the world has achieved everything, then everyone's jobs, even if they feel like they're important, they're actually useless because everything's been achieved. I'm going to go and keep reading and I'll update you guys. I'm actually going to turn on my fan because I'm actually a bit hot to be honest with you guys. But yes, bye. Okay, so it is currently 2.30 in the morning and I am a third of the way through Scythe. I read to chapter 14, page 145. So we just got to the part for those who've read this book, where they're at the uh, conclave and about to do their like whole apprentice thingy, um, which isn't a spoiler for other people because that wouldn't make any sense to you. Really interesting so far. So first off, for some reason, when I went into this, I thought that the whole point of like, like he chose two apprentices and that whichever apprentice wasn't chosen was gonna be the one that the, like, okay, let me, <laughs> let me restart. 
I thought for some reason that he has two apprentices, Citra and Rowan. And I thought that whoever won at the end of the year and was chosen to be the newest scythe would have to glean the other person as like the way that it worked. But it seems like that's not the case and that the person just gets returned back to their normal life, which in my opinion sounds fishy. So I think that what I said is probably true. Because like you can't, we could, someone can't just go back to their normal life after training for a year to be someone who kills people. Second off, there have been like slight, like slight inklings towards a romance between Citra and Rowan. It's very minor, but I kind of like it so far. I think it adds a little bit more dimension to the relationship that these two characters have because they are living with each other. They're kind of the only person that the other person can talk to. And so it seems kind of natural that there would be this sort of underlying like dash of romance that would occur. I don't know. It's not bothering me, but I've heard that's a huge drawback for a lot of people who read this book. Anyway, that's all for this little update. I'm enjoying the book. I can see this definitely being a five star just because I'm really enjoying Neil Schusterman's writing. And um, yeah. Oh, last thing I want to say is Scythe Goodard or whoever the one is with the Scythe with the gems on it and his whole idea of um, mass like gleaning. There's something iffy going on there. I smelt it from the second he appeared and you find out about him very early on. Um, his his signature gleaning is to mass glean. So he like goes onto like say like an airplane and kills everyone on it. Or like he'll go into like a coffee shop and kill everyone in it. And I just, I think there's something wrong about it that doesn't sit right with me. And so I think there's going to be a definite part of him in the storyline as kind of an evil person. But I'm not really sure yet how it's going to totally play in. So we'll see. Anyway, bedtime. Love you guys. Bye. Hey guys. So it's been a couple days because I've been lazy and didn't feel like updating or filming anything. But... I didn't finish Scythe by Neil Schusterman. You see those two Saths on the cover? I actually really enjoyed this. I was surprised. It definitely got to the point where I couldn't put it down and I was just kept on going and the very end was very fast paced. I'm really surprised by how much I enjoyed this. I don't think it's a five star read for me. I think it's between a four and a 4.5. It was really interesting. I loved getting to know this world and the characters and there are a lot of like twists and turns in this. Some that I did see coming, some that I didn't. I will say that I think that the names chosen at the end were pretty cool. I'm curious to see how it's gonna go. I do want to say that there is trigger warning towards the end for self-harm, because as I said, there is self-gleaning, which is a thing that um, scythes can do. They, the only way a scythe can actually die is by killing themselves. And so that is a trigger in this. I really love Scythe Curie. She's awesome. Oh my gosh, really cool. And we can get to see a little bit more of the Thunderhead towards the end of this book. And it makes me curious because the second book in the series is called Thunderhead. So it makes me wonder if we're going to see more interactions with the Thunderhead. Because technically the Thunderhead, which is like the gigantic AI system that kind of controls the entire world and makes everything like good. This, the Thunderhead can interact with humans, but it's not allowed to interact with the Scythe gem. So it can't have any interactions with the Scythes and what they do. So I'm interested to see how they're gonna get around that. I I know one way they will, but I have I have some questions that I, I have. But the quote that I really liked was, the world has a talent for rewarding bad behavior with stardom, which is so true. Like there are so many aspects of this that relate to our current day. And it's just a really interesting look on society and the idea because in my opinion, there is no such thing as a utopian society. There are false utopians that are actually just dystopians, but on the outside, they can seem like a utopian. But as you really start to understand it, there's always going to be some form of corruption regardless. And this book shows that. I think it's a really interesting read and something that people could definitely reread and delve more into the deeper meanings as to what's going on in this book and how it relates to our current society. Really cool. I'm so glad that I own the second and third book in this series already. Overall, the three books I read, so I read Strange the Dreamer, The Raven Boys, and Scythe. All of these were five star reads from our very wonderful friend, Jade from The Jaded Reader. I think that The Raven Boys 
was four stars. And then I think that Strange and Scythe are 4.5 stars. They're not perfect five stars for me. I'm trying to be a little bit more cautious with the five stars I'm giving out because I feel like I'm a bit too generous with my five star reads. So if any of these are books that you've been hesitant about, but you think that you have the same reading taste as me, definitely check them out. This Scythe has definitely got me into the mood to read more like dystopian sci-fi books. If you guys have any dystopian sci-fis to recommend to me, please leave them in the comments down below. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button down below if you want to see more of me. Subscribe to my channel and until next time, thanks a bunch guys. Bye!